Welcome to Beneath the Bible, where we're helping you dig deeper and uncover the world beneath the sacred book. In this series, we're going to look at the historical background of the Bible. We'll look at the different periods of time that historians and archaeologists use as they look at the ancient world, as well as a few important people and places along the way. We'll also look at a few ways these historical overviews can help us see the Bible in its context. In this video, we're going to look at a major historical event called the Late Bronze Age Collapse. The Bronze Age Collapse is the term that historians and archaeologists use to refer to the relatively sudden end of the societies and political institutions that developed over the long course of the Bronze Age in the Eastern Mediterranean. This collapse happened over the course of several decades around 1200 BC. It's during this time period that we see the Israelites of the Old Testament emerging as a distinct people group in the highlands of what is now Israel. Scholars use the term collapse in a specific way, and that is how we're going to use it here. When a society collapses, it experiences a rapid and uncontrolled loss of an established level of complexity. In the case of the Bronze Age collapse, the complex, bureaucratically managed, palace-based economies and political institutions of the Bronze Age empires stopped working in the same way they had for centuries, and those societies fell apart. One scholar has simply called this period the catastrophe, and as we'll see, this is a pretty accurate description of this event. If you haven't watched our late Bronze Age video, it might be helpful to go watch it now so you can better understand the world that fell apart during the Bronze Age collapse. So the big questions are, what happened during the Bronze Age collapse, and why did it happen? Well, the truth is we aren't entirely sure what caused the Bronze Age collapse. What we do know is that the archaeological evidence paints a pretty bleak picture of this time period. Around the Eastern Mediterranean, numerous major city-states and empires fell within a matter of decades. Look at each of these groups in turn the Mycenaeans, the Hittites, Cyprus, the Levant, and Egypt. In the Aegean, in modern-day Greece and western Turkey, the Mycenaean world was a patchwork of city-states controlled by elite rulers who lived in sprawling palace complexes. These palace complexes operated complicated bureaucracies which oversaw various goods and services in the region. Things like grains, olives, and grapes, but also terebinth, wood, wool, flax, and a lot of military equipment. At the end of the Bronze Age, the vast majority of these fortified city-states were burned, abandoned, or both. Sites like Mycenae and Tyrants were burned, but later partially reoccupied. Other sites like Pylos were burned and abandoned, along with about 90% of the rural settlements around it. The city-states and palaces which dominated the Bronze Age Aegean came to an abrupt end. Anatolia, in modern-day Turkey, was the heartland of the Hittite Empire. Unlike the city-states of the Aegean, the Hittite Empire had an imperial system operated from its capital at Hattushas. From there, the Hittites vied for dominance of the Near Eastern world throughout the Late Bronze Age. However, their empire began to disintegrate near the end of the, near the, end of the Bronze Age, and Hattushash was burned and looted around 1180 BC. Virtually every other major Hittite settlement suffered a similar fate during this time period. The Hittites could not hold off invasions from their old enemies like the Kashka to the north, and new enemies also emerged, moving through the eastern Mediterranean, like the Phrygians and a group that historians call the Sea Peoples. Cyprus, to the south of Anatolia, was less complexly organized than its neighbors, but its settlements also suffered destruction and abandonment during the Bronze Age collapse. A site on the south coast of Cyprus called Kalavasos Ios Demetrios seems to have been abandoned while, it was, while its residents were preparing for some impending disaster, as the site was cleared out but never reoccupied. Other sites, like the major commercial city of Enkomi on the east coast, were burned, and only parts of it were partially reoccupied for a time period as refugees founded a new settlement nearby. On the Levantine coast, from Syria down to what is now Israel, the Late Bronze Age world was populated by city-states, which shared a similar language and culture that we might broadly call Canaanite. In the north, in Syria, some settlements escaped disaster while others were burned. The site of Ugrit in modern-day Syria is one important site, which was violently attacked and burned. Arrowheads were found among the burnt debris, so we are pretty confident it wasn't destroyed by natural causes. In the midst of the burnt remains of Ugra, a cache of clay tablets were preserved, which provided invaluable insights into understanding the language, culture, and religion of Ugra. The culture is often seen as the closest analog to the Canaanite culture of the Bible. To the south in what is now Israel, destruction was widespread at sites like Hatzor, Megiddo, Lachish, 
Bethel, Beth Shemesh, Ashdod, and Ashkelon, all of which were major Canaanite city-states during the Late Bronze Age. The destruction of these city-states coincides with the emergence of the Israelites, which is a very distinctive archaeological event. More on this later. Unlike many of the major powers of the Late Bronze Age, Egypt was spared the worst of this disastrous period, at least at its core. Egypt's empire stretched up the Levantine coast, but during the Bronze Age collapse, it crumbled into isolated pockets of Egyptian influence. Egypt re retained control of the region around the Nile, but what was the dominant imperial power of the Late Bronze Age contracted to a few small islands of Egyptian authority in an increasingly chaotic world. Egypt survived only by fighting off fierce invaders trying to move into Egypt. Pharaohs like Merenepta and Ramses III recorded their victories over some of these groups. Ramses III's victories are notable as he was in contact with an enigmatic group that historians call the Sea People, the same group that may have contributed to the collapse of the Hittite Empire. Now, the Sea Peoples is a confederation of peoples who probably originated in the Aegean world or somewhere beyond it and migrated around the Eastern Mediterranean during the Bronze Age collapse. Scholars debate whether the emergence of the Sea Peoples is a cause or an effect of the collapse. From our sources, we know the various groups within their confederation operated around the Eastern Mediterranean as pirates and mercenaries who caused problems for the great powers of the Bronze Age. At Ramses III's mortuary temple at Medinet Habu, the different groups of sea peoples are depicted in distinct ways. For example, the Sheridan have horned helmets, while a group called the Peliset have feathered helmets. This Peliset group is identified by scholars as the Philistines of the Bible. There's a lot more to talk about with the sea peoples that we hope to dive into in a future video. So the question remains, why were all these sites destroyed and why did these empires fall, all within such a short period of time? We aren't entirely sure. The power players of the Bronze Age tended to keep pretty good records, but they didn't necessarily keep good records of their collapse in real time for us to read. We're largely left with archaeological evidence rather than written records to help us understand what happened. There are a lot of theories that archaeologists have, have suggested, each with varying degrees of merit. Some scholars have suggested a natural event called an earthquake storm, where tectonic shifts lead to a series of catastrophic earthquakes, one after another, that destroyed cities beyond repair. There is some evidence for earthquake damage in this part of the world around the end of the Bronze Age, but it doesn't seem to be widespread enough to pinpoint this as the cause of the collapse everywhere. Other scholars have suggested that the climate shifted and societies couldn't adapt to a drier climate. We know from some records that there were food shortages in some places during this time, we know this because they were asking for and expecting food to be traded from areas that didn't have a shortage. Records from one palace have been analyzed and have shown that in the time before its collapse, they did have sufficient food to provide for all the palace's dependencies. Also, recent studies of carbon samples indicate that this time was not unusually dry. In light of all this evidence, crop failures related to climate change don't seem to be the cause of the collapse. Another theory of the cause of the Bronze Age collapse is migration. Entire people groups began to move and they conquered and settled in new lands which couldn't cope with the new migrants. There's a lot of evidence that people groups were on the move during this time, but again, it's not obvious if their movements were causing the collapse or if they were moving because the collapse was already underway. Finally, economic changes have been suggested as the cause of the Bronze Age collapse. Bronze Age economies were dominated by the centers of power in the palaces. But if there were significant shifts in how the economy worked, it may have destabilized the palaces and caused a catastrophic failure of the entire political institution. The most likely answer as to what caused the Bronze Age collapse is something called systems failure. This theory posits that the Bronze Age sociopolitical system had developed for millennia, but during the collapse it grew overly complex and fragile. Then some event or series of events around 1200 BC triggered a cascading failure within these systems that swept through the world of the Eastern Mediterranean. The Late Bronze Age world was so interconnected that the failures in each regional system couldn't be contained, and these failures spread around the entire Near East. This theory also allows for the possibility that local causes triggered collapse, and it doesn't necessitate an all-encompassing explanation for the entire Bronze Age collapse. It allows for regional and local triggers whose effects ripple outward. With so many complex theories about its cause, it's no surprise that there's nothing even close to a consensus about what caused the Bronze Age collapse. Whatever the cause, the effect of the Bronze Age collapse is pretty clear. All archaeologists agree that the Bronze Age collapse was catastrophic and completely altered the landscape of this region for the centuries that followed. Understanding the Bronze Age collapse provides lots of valuable insights for understanding the Bible. But I want to emphasize three important points here. First is the way that the fall of the Bronze Age empires led to the origins of Israel. 
Now, this is the time in which the stories of Moses, Joshua, and the early judges are set. It's the context of Israel's formation as a distinct people group. It's the beginning of a national consciousness for ancient Israel. And it's the crucible in which Israel's origins as a nation are forged. Now, all this would not have been possible if the major imperial powers of the Bronze Age were still vying for control of Israel's promised land. How could Israel come out of Egypt into the Promised Land if Egypt was still the imperial power in control of that Promised Land? Second, it's during this time that Israel's mortal enemy as a nation is introduced, the Philistines. The power vacuum left by the collapse of the major empires not only allowed Israel to emerge, it led to the emergence and migration of other people groups as well. In the midst of the Bronze Age collapse, the Philistines left their homeland in the Aegean world and ultimately settled in the southern Levant, where they became the foil for the children of Israel. It's against Philistine identity and aggression that the Israelites identify themselves. Finally, the destructions of this period preserved sites and texts from many places, but of particular note is Ugarit in Syria. While the Ugarit language is not exactly the same as the Canaanite language, it is the closest parallel we have to knowing and understanding the Canaanite culture and religion, which are so prevalent in the Old Testament. In addition to that, the literature preserved from Ugarit has proven incredibly important for comparative study of Hebrew literature, particularly the Psalms. Knowing Ugaritic literature, its vocabulary, literary devices, and conceptual world is a critical tool for understanding the Old Testament and we only have these texts preserved because Ugarit was burned. Thanks for joining us for this Beneath the Bible video. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, we've included some references and resources in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website beneaththebible.com. If you learned something new today, take a minute to share this video with your friends. And until next time, Keep digging.